what we're going to do is we're going to put the chicks in here. We're going to staple um, the sides of the tile. Of Just, what are we doing? <laughs> we're making a, a booter for the chicks. Okay, so what we got going on over here is we have our ducks on this side, our chickens on that side. The chicks aren't quite there yet, <laughs> but uh, they're making faces at me behind the camera. It's lots of little activities of little little people and little girls over here. But what we have in this one, four Pekin ducks, and they're pretty big. We'll, we'll, you know, you got shots of those. We'll show you those in a second. We don't have the chicks yet. Made these two boxes out of two out of uh, plywood. Out of this is a single sheet of plywood. This is not quite a full sheet. So this one is uh, four equal sections, two feet tall. So it ends up being four feet wide by four feet wide box, two feet tall. This one's the same four feet by four feet, but it's only about 16 or 18 inches tall uh, because it wasn't quite a full sheet. It's just something I had left over from another project. And we've got two lamps in each. The idea being is that one lamp will be a little bit closer to the surface and one lamp will be a little bit higher up. So we can actually vary the temperature a little bit and create it a little bit warmer, a little bit cooler. I hope that as the chicks get older and as the ducks get a little bit more used to their environment, that we can drop down to one lamp and only have to use that. But that's what we have going on. I'll show you also in a second the little cages we made a la um, Abundant Permaculture Justin Rhodes. So we made the little cages that fit over top of a, in this case, we've got a like a dish pan and an old uh, uh, ceramic pan so that we can put the water on top of that and it doesn't drag the chips and all that kind of stuff up into it. We also have a waterer that we borrowed from our neighbor and a couple things that we bought. So all in all, this has been a very budget friendly uh, way of doing things. So the top on this side is made with pallet wood. This is just a piece of a couple pieces of pallet and some chicken wire stapled to the top. Because these ducks are so big, um, we're afraid that they can easily jump up on top of their water if they figure that out and then they're out of here because uh, they're actually pretty tall. The two lamps, like we say, with two different heights. One that is just slightly above this seems to be fine. We've got the thermometer down in there, shows that it's about 95 degrees in between these two lamps. So they've been kind of hanging out at a couple different spots, but and it's their first day and first couple hours, so a lot of different things are going on. Got their feed in there, a combination of fermented feed and just the regular chick starter. And they kind of seem to prefer the chick starter at this point. But again, they've only been here for a little while. The one thing that they really did enjoy, and we'll have to get some footage of later, is some fresh uh, grass clippings and little grass pieces from outside. Even though it's February, there's a little bit of stuff growing. Taking that stuff and putting it inside a little bowl of water, and they just, they love that stuff. Mama duck. I like my ducklings. <laughs> They're pretty cute. But Mama got to hold them on the way home um, from the farm store in her lap and was just hoping that that box would hold up from all the, um, <laughs> let's say, duck activity that was going on inside of it, hoping they weren't have, gonna have to change pants. In the 15-minute drive. <laughs> yeah, if that. <laughs> Those are four happy ducks. <laughs> so funny. It sounds so hilarious. Back in your lips, not allowed in this house. Dude, you just scratched me, I think. So this is the same kind of setup, it's just a lot shorter, um, you know, four to six inches or so shorter than the other one. So this one will be fine for the baby chicks. Our theory is, our hope is, is because those ducks are big, that they've only got, they're three weeks old. So they are not that far from being able to go outside. Even though, again, it's February, it's, it's, it's March tomorrow, I think, or something like that. But even though it's that time of year, they're not very far from being able to go outside so that when the chicks get bigger, if we need to expand, if we need to do different things, then we can move them out of here into there or split them up, however we need to do that. But for right now, we're gonna put the baby chicks that are only gonna be about this tall inside the one that's a little lower and we'll keep the ducks in the big tall one. We do have the frame and a cage just like we have for the other one, but I haven't put it together yet. Don't know that I'll need it. 
And then you can see we got the two lamps, same setup as we got before, and our little feeder um, or waterer tray that we have over there. All of this built out of scraps. The hardware cloth that I have over here on top of that and on top of the other uh, feed stand, I guess, or watering stand, both of that, both of those things are made from leftover parts and pieces from the Chickshaw build that we had. Got to check out that video uh, later too. So everything we have is very repurposed or we already had on hand. Uh, very little out-of-pocket cost. But as we get for, further toward uh, the end of filming this and getting ready to publish this video, we'll be putting that information down in the link below and give you some idea of exactly uh, what we spent, how much we spent, how much it cost us. Now, a lot of our stuff is going to be freebies and secondhand and all that kind of stuff. So our costs are going to be different from everybody else. But you can see what you can do with a very limited or, or no budget at all because it's very easy uh, have doing it the way we're doing it, it's very easy to see that this could be a very expensive venture were you doing this just by buying stuff from Amazon or your local farm store or whatever, that this could get into the hundreds of dollars in a, in a hurry. Um, so we're very fortunate that we have a very low cost of entry to get these things. Plus we got three week old ducklings uh, for a steal. So <laughs> at the baby duckling cost, it was really funny to see them in the store next to their little, uh, their little brothers and they were... <laughs> Way bigger. Yeah. Got anything? <laughs> yeah. They were way bigger. Okay. The little duckies were like that tall. Mm -hmm. They're like that tall. Okay, so the next piece is, uh, this is what we have at the bottom. This is some flooring left over from two couple houses ago that we kept this piece, and that's what's underneath there. So what we're gonna do is put this on top of there and staple it on the outside. Originally, I had hoped to put it on the inside to kind of contain everything, but it just kept folding up, and I just, it, it works better uh, stapled to the outside. Oh, hmm. Thank you. And there's one that's broken, which is no use. Oh, you found a couple. I did leave some on the floor over there. So let's bring this up. Go right there for right now. Tie a knot in the electrical cord. And then put a clip of some kind around it. I use this one on the other because it's what I've got. That way, just in case something slips, something breaks, the little um, fastener on the lamp malfunctions, it's actually not going to fall. Gonna take this light, hang it up, the chain. And a nice big heavy duty carabiner. I just happen to have a bunch of these things lying around, so it really helps. That's all I want. That's My all idea, I want. the hope is, to have these, that probably that. makes a lot of noise. The hope is to have these at different heights. So we can have one that's a little bit higher and one that's a little bit lower and adjust them as that's necessary. Right. And then eventually we'll be able to turn one of them off, I hope. Um, but we'll just kind of see. I, we have them. I had these already in place for uh, photography purposes. So don't, it's no extra money out of pocket to get these things up, up and going.
I just put that through the knot that I made. And then flip the whole deal. Through a link in the chain. And there you go. Just a little bit of extra security. And to keep the chain up out of the way, I can do that. And also because Because of how this is set up, you've got carabiners at the bottom. And on this side, I actually have a hook. There was a hook that was already in the ceiling. That's why we opted to go for that one and move the whole box over here. Just made it a little bit easier, saved us a step. And then at the top, as I'll show you in a second, I've got a, a fencing staple that's pounded into our uh, floor joist from above. And then another carabiner up there. So I could adjust it in one of two ways. I could adjust it and mess with all this down here, or I can just adjust it from the top. It's a little harder to get to the other one, uh, the other brooder on the other side, so I tend to adjust it down here more often. But I think because I've got the hook up here and a different carabiner, I think I'm just gonna adjust this side from up top. I can stand on these corners. Um, it's you know plywood joined together, pretty tight little base, and it's certainly enough to hold me up. Um, so just for a second to jump up there and do that. So I might go with that. Now I've got, I'll show you the setup that we have. We've got a power outlet right over here. I'm gonna run a surge protector and outlet strip up and over uh, from the outlet, which is a little bit high. We had them done that way on purpose. So it's a little bit high and we'll run it up and dangle this stuff up from the ceiling and plug these in up there somewhere. Okay, so there's our setup. Gonna have that guy um, just kind of dangling. I tied a knot, tied a knot in that, and I'm hanging it from the same hook for right now. I might put another one up there uh, just to isolate that a little bit better from where the chain is gonna be. But then on the other side, I kind of did the same thing with an existing hook and then just looped it around. So now, I'm gonna plug it in. There you go. And we've got light. Do we put these in? Go right ahead. Can you reach it? Flip it around. There you go. The other one? Mm-hmm. I think you need to flip there you go. Okay, now we're going to turn this off for a second so we can screw in the light bulbs and then we'll test it with the switch. These are the light bulbs we're using. It works. Well, this one's turned on. You're right. Maybe I left it in on the wrong side. I think we got to figure out what went wrong on that one. Is it this? No. Should we try again? Yeah. Hmm. That's a problem. That is definitely a problem. Trying it again. Okay. We'll see what happens. Yay! So maybe it's the bulb. Maybe. Maybe sometimes, you know, I had some, uh, doing some photography and some other types of things, I had some problems with some of these, some bulbs not working in certain lamps for whatever reason, I'm not sure. So what happened is, for whatever reason, this bulb doesn't seem to work. So we got a two pack of these bulbs and the other two were working just fine, but for whatever reason, we switched the light bulb, the 
we got one to work and one didn't in our two lamp setup over here. And one of them doesn't work and one does. I can't see any reason why it doesn't, but it doesn't. So we're gonna take this back uh, when we go get the chicks and we'll exchange it for one that hopefully works.